Hi everyone, my name is Steve Klipowitz. I'm one of the developers of the Speedtree product line. I'm going to show you a little bit about Speedtree FBX plugin for Maya today, which is something that ships with the Speedtree modeler. Okay, so here I am in Maya, and the first thing you need to do is load the plugin. So if you go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, you can load it from here. You can see at the top that mine's already been loaded and set to auto load. If you needed to find those files initially, you can go to your uh, Speedtree Modeler install installation directory, scripts, Maya, and they're right there. You can just select one and open it, and your plugins will be loaded. I set mine to auto load, so next time I run Maya, they'll already be there. So once that's loaded, similar to the standard FBX plugin, you would just go File Import, and make sure you choose the file type of Speedtree FBX instead of regular FBX. That's going to open up some new options for you. So if you select an FBX file, you'll see there's some initial options that you can set, and this can all be changed after import. But if you wanted to set something before you took the tree in, you could do it there. So I found my version of the palm tree, my trusty sample palm, which I use for testing. And I've imported it with the Speedtree FBX importer. So let's see what we got here. First thing you'll notice is it looks nice in the viewport. You know, it should it should work well with the viewport renderer. This particular tree has point cache animation, so if I scrub the timeline, you'll see the baked animation in there. And uh, an interesting feature of the Speedtree FBX plugin is it allows you to use point cache along with skeletal animation. So I can move these joints around the tree will deform, and on top of that, I can do uh, the point cache still with FBX by default in Maya, you can't stack these two features, you have to do that manually. So we take care of that for you with the plugin. So past that, the main feature of the plugin is that it processes your materials so that they look the same way that they look in the Speedtree modeler and that they work well in Maya depending on uh, whichever renderer you're using. It's set up to work with any of Maya's four default renderers, hardware, software, Hardware 2 and, and Mental Ray. So when you import a tree, you'll see there's these new nodes created, Speedtree FBX nodes. And for each shader, you'll have one of these partner nodes which work with the shader. It's kind of like a preprocessor. So let me show you what we got in here. The, the top group is shader actions, and this is how you would go about processing your tree. You can tell that you want the shaders to be processed for a specific renderer. Or what I do is I use auto update so that when the renderer changes any Speedtree FBX files will automatically go and their materials will be adjusted for whatever renderer. If we go into the, the hypergraph, hypershade, you can see here what is resulting as far as actual shaders go. So if I graph this palm frond you'll see that there's really nothing there. It's just here's the Speedtree FBX node that we were talking about and then there's a asset that has all of the utility nodes tucked away nicely in here so there's not a lot of clutter. You can toggle that asset with this checkbox here for each shader and so if you wanted to to uncheck that and regraph this network you'll see that there's um, some utility nodes going on to do things like normal mapping and, and translucency. I normally keep it in an asset just for scene management reasons um, this bake shader settings uh, button will take this node and, and remove it from the network. It'll kind of um, make it so if someone else doesn't have the Speedtree FBX plugin that they'll still be able to use this tree without any problems. So um, depending on your pipeline you might want to bake shaders after you've tuned them up. But the good thing about the plugin is it lets you tune these settings all in one place, all from one panel, without having to jump around to different parts of the interface. So right now we're using uh, Maya Software Renderer. So if I just do kind of a, a quick test render right here, just with the straight import, you can see what, what we result in. Okay, so it looks pretty much like it looks in the Speedtree modeler. You'll notice there's normal mapping going on here. 
which is a big deal because soft, Maya software doesn't support normal mapping right out of the box. It really only uses bumps, and Speedtree is built around normal maps, so that's one of the major advantages it has for Maya software. You can do things like just change regular surface attributes, similarly to how they're set up in, in the modeler, Speedtree modeler. You can add color in, and, and that'll render. So if I render it again, this frond should all be red now. All right, so that worked. It's not really um, not really quite accurate for this tree. I'm going to go back to white. You can also set back face culling. So if you wanted to not draw the back faces of, the, of these branches, for instance, you can turn that on there and not have to worry about setting that somewhere else in the app. Translucency is automatically turned on for uh, certain materials if it detects that it should have a translucent effect, which is when light shines through it, you can see the light on the other side. And past that we have some more advanced surface attributes. We sync displacement, you can render vertex colors if your renderer supports it, and, and gamma correction as well if your renderer supports it. So, like I said earlier, I use mine so that when I change the render everything updates and it'll, it'll render correctly in all of these renderers. So, you can see now if I change the Maya Hardware 2 for instance, and render, we get what's in the viewport over here. And then if you go over to Mental Ray, you see the shader is updated again. And now it's rendered in Mental Ray, and you see that the shaders work nicely with the renderer no matter what. And you can see that it was processed most recently for Mental Ray right here at the top of the shader actions. Okay, so just quickly I wanted to show you maybe what some of these effects look like. So I'm going to go into my, my render settings here and create a indirect lighting. I'm going to create a physical sun and sky, which is a mental ray feature. And now there's a sky object in there, and if I can select it, There we go. So this represents the sun. Maybe I can change that angle a little bit. And if I render now, there should be some translucency going on in the tree. Let's see. Yeah, I have translucency on. The scalar is set to 2. So that should make it pretty visible if I render. And you can see it in here already with the undersides of these fronds that the light is bleeding through and that effect looks nice. So that'll work in a variety of different renderers if I turn it off and save this clip. You can see the difference. Okay, so there we go. Much more realistic with translucency on. And that's just a simple button click here in the interface. Another option we have is built-in displacement settings. So if I go in here and zoom in on the bark, go down a little bit and enable displacement, maybe increase this scalar a little bit so that it's more pronounced. Okay, so that's too pronounced probably, but it proves my point. If I render it again with displacement off, you'll see that it, it's straight up and down. So those kind of things are all controlled in one panel here. It's, it's really nice and convenient. And then if you were, you know, like I said, there's this bake button. So if you were done editing the displacement or anything else about this bark, and you wanted to pass this off to someone else that didn't have the plugin, you can press this bake button and it goes and it puts some controls here on the asset itself so you can still change it a little bit but it's not quite as convenient as having the plugin installed so that's Speedtree FBX that's the first part of the plugin 
the next part of the plugin I'm going to show is Speech Tree Forest, which lets you take a whole forest of information and get it into the scene. So that's coming up next. Okay, so for the next part, I'm going to need some forest data. So I've gone over to the Speed Tree Modeler to show you just some of my little test setup scene. This is just totally a test scene. Nothing really ready for production, but I just have a terrain and a couple of proxy trees in here. A zone is used to place them, and then I'm using proxy generators to randomize and, and set up how these trees are placed in the scene. And now that I have them in some sort of a working order, I'm just going to export their location. So go to export world building data, set this up how you like, and then you're going to export a SWA speed tree world building file. Okay, so I replaced that one. I also have some grass in here, but since there, there's a lot of them, I'm going to do this degradation setting to draw proxies as spikes. And then I'm going to unhide this grass and hide these trees. And what, what that's going to give me is I'm going to be able to export this now as a separate SWA file that's just grass. I'll call that grass. All right, so here we are now. And the next thing I'm going to do is jump back over to Maya and get that data in. Okay, so here we are back in Maya, and I've prepared a bit of a simple scene with the same terrain that you saw in the world building setup, and I've imported four tree models. These are Speedtree FBX models. Uh, you can see the Speedtree FBX nodes here, and it's just like that palm tree I had before. So the next step is to import the forest data. So to do that, you go similarly to the file import menu, and you want to make sure Speedtree Forest is the type of file. It was on Speedtree FBX before. So this is going to find those SWA files that the modeler creates. So I have an SWA folder here where I've already exported these SWA files in the last step, so I'm going to ex import the tree SWA file. And that was it. It's done importing. You can see these um, little dots here, these points, those are representing the the placement of the uh, trees in the scene. The way they get in there is we use particles, so we use standard Maya particle caching to get the tree positions, rotations, and scales into here. Uh, so here's the plugin interface over here, and we see there's not that much to it. There's a SWA file, and you can reload it. You have an option to hide source objects, display things as bounding boxes, and you can toggle the visibility of the whole forest. Down here are the actual forest entries, so this list will change size depending on how many trees you have in your original forest, and they're named how they were in the modeler. But I can't select any of this. I can't do anything right now. That's because the way that you go about um, adding these trees is by first selecting the trees that you want in the forest, then shift selecting the forest itself and these options will become available. It's kind of a, a Maya way of doing things. So what I'm going to do is f go down here and try to find that node. There's a lot of things in this scene already. And here it is at the bottom, trees. And that's just an asset in itself, but at the bottom there's trees underscore forest. And that's the actual speed tree SWA reading node. Alright, so I can see here that the forest order is aloe vera, dragon tree, and sagebrush. And since this is a simple scene, I'm going to go ahead and select these in that order so I can assign them all at the same time. So I'm just going to select the aloe vera, and then the dragon tree, and then the sagebrush, and then finally I'm going to control select trees underscore forest. Okay, and now my assign buttons are available. And I'm just going to assign them one after another. And you see my source trees are hidden because of this option over here. And now those models are where they should be according to the proxies in the, the speed tree modeler. Um, just to show you the options just a little bit, if I turn off that hide source objects, you'll see that they are again over here. 
if I do the display as bounding box option, you'll see where that buys me. It lets you have an interactive scene. You can kind of still see where the objects are without seeing them in full detail. And then finally, force visible will just completely hide these options. Now, let's see what else it has on here. I'm going to hide source objects. If I wanted to remove one of these, I can just press the remove button. I can remove the aloe vera. This back over here is made visible again. It's no longer in my forest. This entry is grayed out now. Or another thing that you can do is use this jump button here to go and select the forest entry even though it's hidden. So now I've selected the original dragon tree shape even though the actual node is hidden. So there's a couple things you can do there. I'm going to add this back in to the aloe vera slot. Alright, so that's one way to add trees to a forest, to select them and then select the, the particles themselves. Another way you can do it is you can select a tree before importing. So I've selected that grass node over there because I know the next forest only has one proxy in it. And when I select grass, it should automatically use that whatever I had selected to populate. And you can see that it did, and it selected the forest. My one entry of elephant grass has gone all the way through there. Uh, now there's a lot of geometry in the scene now, so this would be a good use of displays bounding box. You see it's, it's more interactive now. Okay, so I can go in here and frame up my scene, and we can see how we're how it's looking. Now I feel looking at this that uh, I maybe want some of these things to move around, so I'm gonna save my scene so that that work is still in there. I'm going to go back to my world building setup over here. Hide the grass, unhide these, turn off the proxy uh, option. And what I'm going to do in here is node edit a couple of these proxies. I just want to move them. So I'm going to move this one in. I'm going to move this one over here a little bit. And then this one in the back is pretty close to the edge. I'm going to move it um, over here. And then let's just shrink it down. So there's a size scale property. I'm going to shrink that one. Maybe rotate this one a little bit too. Alright, so I've made some changes now and if I want to get these changes over to Maya now, it's a pretty trivial process. I just, again, select the objects that I want. Export world building data. Trees, I'm just going to save right over it. And then when I go back into Maya, I can select this forest. And if I reload, all of these entries should stay in place. So I reloaded. The changes that I made got propagated to Maya, and it's easy to go back and forth between the two using this workflow. So that's how SpeedTree uh, Forest for Maya works, and then this data is cached off into particle caches and on disk, so you could read those into other, other uh, parts of your pipeline after Maya if there's something in there. Uh, I'm going to save my work again. And let's go ahead and give this a render, see how it looks. Now we're looking at a pretty heavy scene now, so while this renders, I'm going to go and take a break and come back when it's done, and we'll go look and see what our results look like. Okay, 15 minutes later, we have our render. You can see down there the render time and the results, nice shadows and daylight and everything. It's worth mentioning that the built-in gamma correction for the shaders is really helpful if you do use a sun and sky system like this because it's going to be required to make your uh, materials look right in mental ray anyway. And so if I needed to make any changes to those shaders I could just change it on one of these instances and it would propagate through to the others. Maybe I would move one of these plants over here a little bit and uh, so now at this point you would just take this out and do your tone mapping and your compositing software and you would be done. So that's the workflow for Speedtree Forest and Speedtree FBX for Maya. Thanks for listening. Once again, I'm Steve Klipowitz and have a good day.